guys so we are going to look at extended hardware concepts that's what it says in textbook anyway but actually we're just looking at input devices input devices what are input devices input devices what are input devices input devices what okay I need to fix these slides what are input devices okay well anything that gives an instruction to a computer to do something all right, anything that enables you to give an instruction or a command for a computer to do something, that is an input device. So let's have a look. These are ones that you're probably quite familiar with. If you're using laptops, you have a laptop like this and you have this little area at the bottom. Now, that wasn't a place to put your mug of coffee, okay? That's not what it was for. I know, we learn the hard way, don't we? But that's actually called a trackpad. Yes, a trackpad, and that is, it acts like a mouse. Um, so you take your finger, you move your, your finger over it, and because of the electrical signals in your body, like Iron Man, uh, you can actually then control the mouse and you've got two little keys underneath, a left click and a right click button. How's that? So you don't actually even need a mouse for a, a laptop. That's pretty cool. This is an interesting one. Everyone goes like, what the heck? Well, it's actually easy. Um, this is for people who maybe are serious gamers, okay? Sometimes this is built into a mouse, all right? A track, a track ball, I just said it. Urgh. It's a track ball. So when people have things like arthritis or really bad uh, poor motor functions, okay, or poor motor control, motor control is like the movement of your, your limbs and your hands and things like that. So what they do is you have this huge thing and you just kind of put your hand on it and then you move your palm over the ball and then that moves the mouse or whatever you want to move on the screen and you've got buttons on the sides as well. So that's what a trackball is, okay. Here, I'm not looking at the the pen looking device, I'm looking more at what it's touching and of course we know what that is and this is like the dream of me to have one of these. It's a touch screen, oh a touch screen laptop. Touch screen laptop would be awesome but the input device there is the actual screen. Now you might be looking at this video on a screen and it's not a touch screen so at, at the moment the screen that you're looking at is an output device but if you were able to touch the screen like on a tablet or a fancy laptop with a stylus or your fingers uh, that would be a touch screen and that would be an output device and an input device as well. So a touch screen is definitely an input device because you can then control and monitor and things move things around, tap things, you know, tell the computer what to do. Here's that pen looking thing that we were talking about. What is this? Now it's not a normal pen or pencil. This is a very special kind of pen or pencil and it's called a stylus. A stylus is actually very, very cool because it lets you draw on the screen. It lets you tap things, move things around. You see this one's got two little buttons on and you can like click each. They've got different uh, functions associated with them. So it's very, very cool. Uh, some of the, the, the new Apple iPads have got this thing called an Apple iPen. I think it's called an iPen. And uh, it looks like a pencil, but it's, it's very, very nice and very expensive. Hmm. Here is another input device, also very popular with gamers, uh, a joystick. This is a joystick. In fact, you'll find a joystick has been around from the very, very early days of computers where it actually controls things as well. Um, this could be used also on things like wheelchairs where people are stuck in a wheelchair that may be paraplegics and they have a joystick device on their, the arm of their wheelchair. They can move the wheelchair around with that. Or you're just in a flight simulator and you want to just fly around. Ah, another type of input device, and this is a flatbed scanner. Yes, flatbed. It's obvious. It's a, it's flat. And the nice thing about this is that you can put books on big things that you couldn't just put through a, a sheet fed scanner or on a little printer. This is actually really nice for scanning big objects or objects that are difficult to, to work with. And this is a flatbed scanner that you can just place on the table or wherever, put something on and convert something into digital format right away. So flatbed scanner, you're taking information and you're putting it onto the computer. That's also the scanner is an input device. Now this one gets a lot of people. They look at it, they go, ah, well, that's a printer. And yeah. No, no, that's not a printer. And they go, oh, oh, yes, it's a fax machine. No, no, it's not a fax machine. That's a sheet fed scanner. And I mentioned it earlier. That's a sheet fed scanner. So this is really good for fast scanning. Okay, also an input device. Take your paper, put it in the top, and it just kind of slides through. 
and you just scan stuff at the speed of light. Maybe not the speed of light, but it's pretty cool. Now, this is not some alien technology. This is something we see every day, and this is a handheld scanner. A handheld scanner. Another type of scanner, POS scanner, point of sale, point of sale. Now, here, let me just, I'm going to go back, okay. Point of sale scanner, laser beams, and they scan barcodes. And here you can see, or, or they detect uh, actual other tags, which you'll look at in the next slide which you already saw. Uh, the point of sale scan, you've seen these in store, they're just gonna swipe things over, swipe, 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 uh, or hold it in front, and it scans, inputs the information from the device, from the product, sorry. Here, yeah, these are pretty cool, and I'm glad I didn't show you the answer right away. Have a look. They're not dual accessories, although I don't think they would do very well as jewelry. RFID tags. Now, what we do with RFID tags, RFID means radio frequency identification tags. Really good, because they contain data. They contain information that can be scanned by an RFID scanner. And you might see these on various items of clothing in a clothing store so that you don't walk out of the store without paying, which is bad. Uh, or you might tag your dog or cat or your laptop or your cell phone. Um, there are many, many uses, okay, but the fact is that they are input devices because they contain data that can then be read and inputted into a system. This is a very interesting one, and they're built into also when you go and you buy stuff at a, at a shop, and it was scanning stuff, and then you can either tap and pay, which is pretty cool, but on that device that you're tapping, it also has a magnetic strip scanner, so in case your card's not working properly, you can swipe your card through this magnetic strip scanner, and it reads the magnetic strip on your card, which also contains data. Here is a very interesting one. one I don't think we see this very often anymore, but I, I think that is still around today. In fact, it's a magnetic ink character recognition scanner, or MICR, just say MICR, okay, magnetic ink. Magnetic ink is what we use on checks. Now, although we don't see checks around uh, a lot, they're still around today, and at the bottom of the check, we have magnetic ink. Have a look at the bottom of that check over there. You can see all those numbers, that has been printed onto the check in magnetic ink. And the scanner is able to then read that because of the magnetic properties and decipher those numbers. He has another similar one. It's not magnetic ink, but this is OMR, optical mark recognition. In fact, it's still around today. You could do like a test or a quiz. And in the quiz, you could use your pencil and you could, you know, co uh, cover the A, B, C, or D, you know, cross it out, you know, color it in A, B, C, or D for each question, like a multiple choice, for example. And there you can see that's a multiple choice test right there. It gets fed through this device, and this device then reads the answers based on that. So that's a really cool way of marking stuff. But I mean, we've got technology now that does that today in terms of online digital technology. But this is actually very nice for fast marking. This is what teachers wish they had every day. Of course, you know what this is, barcodes. Barcodes contain information depending on the thickness and the width between the spaces, and that then tells whatever we scan, it tells the information, it tells the information, it tells the device what information that product contains. Okay, so that's also pretty cool. Now, here is a good one. OCR, you're going to get this in a lot of tests, so pay attention. OCR, optical character recognition. For example, you have a document a real hard copy document. It's been printed out or written out or whatever, and you have it like that, so it looks like that. Then you want to put that onto the computer in order to edit that document, okay? You can actually do that. So taking the hard copy, you scan it with a scanner, and then using OCR, optical character recognition, it then converts it into a digital format. So it, it recognizes the characters, optical character recognition, get it? It recognizes the characters, converts it into digital format into a Microsoft Word document that you can then edit. Very, very handy. And of course, you know that we call that the soft copy. Hard copy, physical, soft copy, digital. A webcam, kind of like the one I'm using right now. Um, in fact, that looks very similar to the one I'm using right now. Cool. A webcam is an input device, all right? It gathers information, it captures a data, and then that is inputted into the computer. So a webcam, very, very cool. We all know what this is, it's a microphone. Without a microphone, a webcam is pretty useless. We need to have a microphone to capture 
uh, audio data. Another type of input device, very popular, and this is biometric scanning. Okay, biometric scanning, biometrics, biobiology, and then metrics meaning measurements. So being able to scan things like your fingerprint or your eyes, your iris, uh, or voice recognition or facial recognition. All of these sort of scanners rely on biometrics, so we call them biometric scanners. Again, it's an input device. For example, some laptops come with a scanner. You put your thumb on it and it then unlocks the computer. And that's what you would use a biometric scanner for. Authentication or security, so nobody else can access your computer. Here's another one as well. This is a motion sensor camera. Now, this is a, a Kinect uh, device used with the Xbox and it monitors um, motion and is able to then record that motion and pass it through to the computer which is then able to decipher what that actually means. That's why you can control things with your hands and your feet and your body and all that. So another type of input device. Very similar to a webcam, just slightly more powerful I think. So those are various kinds of input devices that we use or hardware input devices that we use pretty much on a daily basis. So please make sure you go through these and you look for them when you're walking around town in shops at home. Have a look and see all the various kinds of devices we use to input information or give instructions to the computers that we use.